this is Ninjax doing another Dota 2 strategy video. Today's topic is how to make epic comebacks. We've all been in this situation before. Your team is down in kill counts, down in towers, and you have been losing recent team fights. It might seem like there is no chance to come back, but this video is going to show you how to achieve victory even when your team is behind. The first thing we have to consider is your team composition. The key fact is that if your team is behind, chances are you're not going to have the advantage in the early game or the mid game. So your chance of victory lies in the late game. Unfortunately, some team compositions are going to be harder to make that comeback than other teams. For example, if your team consists of Crystal Maiden, Earthshaker, Omni Knights, Lion, and Dark Seer, it's going to be very difficult to come back because your team is full of heroes that shine in the early and mid game. Which means that if you're already behind from early to mid, your chances of winning in the late game is slim to none. However, if your team consists of Lich, Venomancer, Anti-Mage, Lina, and Skeleton King, you can rely on your carries to secure your victory in the late game. While the roles of carries are important, what is more important is that the support heroes create an environment where the carries can get their farm. In order to create that environment, the most important thing to do as a support hero is to buy more wards, observer wards, and sentry wards. Now before I elaborate on how wards can turn a game around, I want to point out a common mistake. A common mistake for a support hero who is behind is to buy less wards. Their logic is that they feel the need to save their money for fancy items like Scythe of Vice to turn the tides of battle. In reality, the better play is to forget about the fancy items altogether. While it is true that both Scythe of Vice and wards can help you win the game, the Scythe costs over 5,000 gold while both wards only cost 400. When you're already behind in gold, you simply do not have the luxury to purchase high-end items and many players will continue farming, chasing for an investment that may never pay off. With that said, now that you got the wards, the question is how can I use them to turn the game around? The first thing you need to do is to use them to regain map control. If you take a look at the example now, the Radiant team is behind in kills and in towers, but more importantly, if you look at the minimap, they have very limited vision of it. So as a result, the Dire team could be anywhere. The Dire team could be in their jungle farming it, they can even send a guy to their Ancients to farm it, they can even actually go to Roshan, take it, and the Radiance wouldn't even notice. On the other hand, the Radiance is limited to farming and defending a small perimeter around their base. While at first, it might seem like a very safe or cozy play, in reality, this is only the calm before the storm. As you can see, the gold advantage is going to swing further and further towards the Dyer's favor. Now in this example, the Radiance isn't hopelessly behind and out of the game. What they can do is they can actually win a couple of team fights, proceed to take all of the Dyer's tier 1 and tier 2 towers, and they can still swing the gold advantage back in their favor. Going back towards again, once your support heroes have warded key spots on the map and regained map vision, what's next? Your goal now is to watch for your opponent's mistakes and punish them every chance you get. Remember that your opponents are humans too and they will make mistakes. A common pattern is that the winning team will make the mistake of being overconfident. So when that happens, that's when you strike back. There are three common mistakes. The first are over aggressive ganks by your opponents. If a small amount of enemies try to dive towards your side of the map for a gank, immediately set up a counter gank and punish them. This also applies to enemy heroes who are farming your side of the map without proper warding. Another mistake to look for are risky Roshan plays. If you can kill the enemy heroes and steal Roshan at the same time, that's a big swing in your team's favor. 
not only are you getting gold and experience, we also gain Aegis, which means that your next team fight is going to be a lot easier. The last common mistake to look for are bolt pushes towards your tier 3 towers. Once your opponents commit to a tower dive, use a terrain to your advantage and hold your grounds. Your team spells with large areas of effects, or AOE, will benefit from your opponents trying to push up a choke point with your tower doing damage. Even one simple mistake by your enemies in this chaotic moment can turn the tides of battle and allow your team to kill their key heroes. The examples given are just a starting point. The main idea is to keep your eyes open around the map and look for possible opportunities to punish your opponents. What you will find is that these small victories will gradually add up. During this period of the game, support your carries. If there is a nice wave of creeps, let them farm it. If you can get them to get a hero kill, let them take the last hits. And remember, continue warding and counter warding the entire map so you can spot enemies' mistakes and punish them. Your ultimate goal is to reach estates where your carries have the gears they need to turn the game around in your favor in the late game. Now it might take 50 minutes, it might take 60, 70, or in this case, 80 minutes. But if you're patient and are willing to invest in wards, that's going to allow you to review your enemy's weaknesses for your team to exploit. With that in mind, you can make the most epic comebacks of your life. And these are the games that we will remember forever. There is nothing more satisfying than holding on to a long drawn out game and come out victorious at the end. I hope this video helped all of you out there. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe for more future videos, and leave your comments below. Anyways, have fun and good luck. This is Ninjax signing out, and I'll see you guys next time.